Hello to all English enthusiasts. First and foremost, I want to congratulate you on your desire to learn this wonderful language. It's a great step you're taking as English can massively help you in both the professional and social aspects of your life. My job, which I love, is to help you on your journey. So I hope you enjoyed this video and don't forget to click and subscribe to our channel for more free English language tips. Today, we're going to delve into a very important topic, which is also a very difficult topic for English language learners, irregular verbs in English. A lot of the most commonly used verbs are irregular verbs, so we need to learn them early, and unfortunately, they are more difficult than regular verbs. But don't worry, because I'm here to make it easy and fun. So let's get started. So, what is the difference between regular and irregular verbs? First, let's take a look at some examples of regular verbs which all follow the same conjugation rules. Let's look at the verb play. In the present simple, we use the verb play. I play football. If we want to use this verb in the past simple, we add ed to form played. I played football yesterday. And if we want to use this verb in the past participle form, it's the same. ED, I have played football. If any of you are asking what is the past participle verb, it's the verb form we use in the present perfect tense after the verb have or has. I have played football. Now let's look at the verb jump. Present simple, jump, I jump over the wall. Past simple, jumped. I jumped over the wall yesterday. And past participle, jumped. I have jumped over the wall. So what are irregular verbs and how are they different? Well, those are the verbs that simply refuse to follow the rules. Why? Because they can. Instead of having a predictable form for the past and past participle like we just saw with regular verbs, each of these irregular verbs has its own trick. So let's take a look at the most important and most common irregular verbs that we need to know in English. Let's start with go. I go to English classes. In the past simple, we say went. I went to English class yesterday. And the past participle, we use gone. I have gone to English classes. Another important irregular verb is have. In the present simple, I have a headache. Past simple, we use had. I had a headache yesterday. And in the past participle, we use had. Yes, it's the same. I have had a headache. Now let's take a look at the verb eat. In the present simple, I eat pizza. In the past, we use ate. I ate a pizza yesterday. And in the past participle, eaten. I have eaten a pizza. Another very important irregular verb is do. In the present simple, I do my homework. Past simple, we use did. I did my homework yesterday. And in the past participle, we use done. I have done my homework. There are also some examples of irregular verbs that do not change their form at all. For example, cut. I cut the paper. For the past, we use cut. I cut the paper yesterday. And the past participle, we also use cut. I have cut the paper. And another example would be put. I put on a coat in the past. Put. I put on a coat yesterday. And in the past participle, put. I have put on a coat. So those are some of the most important examples of irregular verbs in English. Remember, there is no magic formula to learning these. We just have to memorize them and practice. But don't worry, because with patience and practice, you'll master them in no time. And how can you practice these tricky irregular verbs, I hear you ask? Well, how does live class practice with a native English speaking teacher sound? 
In Open English, you'll have access to these native English speaking teachers who offer live group classes 24 7 so you can learn at your own pace. I want to thank you for taking the time to watch this video. I hope the information has been useful and that you're one step closer to mastering irregular verbs in English. Remember to subscribe to our channel to access more free content like this and take your English to the next level. So friends, keep going, you can do it. And if you want any more help in English, remember that we're here for you. So until the next lesson, goodbye and thank you for your time.